So after our one week away, our one very long, almost never-ending week, away from the Muppets, how well do they come back? They bring the house down. Literally. Time to get things started. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Joshua Gillespie, here for another installment of the Muppets 2015 Vlogs. Like I said, last week we didn't have an episode, because apparently Charlie Brown and Toy Story are more important than the greatest thing on television these days. But, regardless, we have the fifth episode of the show to look at, Walk the Swine with guest star Reese Witherspoon, even though throughout the entire episode she's shown without her spoon. That is a horrible joke. As I mentioned, Reese Witherspoon is in this episode, and her purpose here is, well, Miss Piggy is extremely jealous of her for stealing her Oscar, as she puts it. So, how does she get revenge? by going to the same Habitat for Humanity construction site as her and starts competing. I grew up on a farm. I built cows and milk fences. I think you mean... No, that's what I did. I will outwork you any day of the week. The second storyline involves Rizzo the Rat hitting Scooter's brand new car. Come on, it's just a scratch. My airbag went off. Faulty airbag, dented door. Looks like you got a lemon, my friend. But instead of being like, oh, you get your insurance, I'll get my insurance, Rizzo sends Scooter to several of his relatives to try and patch things out. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. So I, uh, spoke to your Uncle Tommy. Boy, that number wakes. I mean, yeah, that number wakes. And the third storyline is during a comedy routine, Fozzie starts making his girlfriend Becky the butt of the joke, mainly focused on her sweating problems. It makes sense, though. Becky's mother's Dutch and her dad's a lawn sprinkler. <laughs> this irritates her to the point that she shows up to the office the next day and starts making fun of Fozzie in front of his friends. So when Fozzie gets out of the shower, uh -huh. he goes outside, yeah. shakes off like a dog, yeah. and makes it sound like a ghost having a stroke. <laughs> okay, he's like... <gasps> so what do I like about this episode? First off, the puppetry. It just keeps getting better and they keep trying new things. I want to show what's so awesome, but it would spoil the ending. So you'll just have to see it for yourself. And that means all of you. I'm not doing these vlogs for my health. I'm just talking about what I like about this show. That doesn't mean you get to skip the episodes, Tom. But anyway, the puppetry is just phenomenal. Secondly, and this is just sort of a thing I've been noticing over the course of the past couple episodes, I like that Kermit is still retaining his same position that he had in The Muppet Show, where even though he's not the focus of the plot, he's still the one that's controlling the chaos and making sure whatever craziness goes on, it can be taken care of. Also, Rizzo the Rat gets a storyline! Ever since Jim Henson's passing and Steve Whitmire taking over the role of Kermit, Steve's other characters have just sort of faded out, such as Bean Bunny and, to an extent, Rizzo. In fact, they make a joke about it in Muppets Most Wanted. So it's nice that this character's finally coming back and, you know, having a prominent role in this series. Speaking of characters who finally get something, Becky, Fozzie's girlfriend, we haven't seen her since the first episode. She's here and she's starting to get a bit of a personality. She's funny, she's enjoyable. I hope she's in more episodes. Something I complained about with the last episode is that it just kind of ended. It was sort of abrupt. Like, it just wrapped itself up so quickly. This episode feels full. It's got a beginning, a middle, and an end, and everything gets wrapped up, and it doesn't... the ending doesn't come out of nowhere. And speaking of the ending, I really like it in this episode. Again, I'm not going to spoil it because that's why I want you guys to go and watch it. But 
I just like it a lot. It does something that I've been waiting for this show to do, to just add that final piece into the Muppets puzzle. Like, now it feels completely Muppets. It's got all the elements it needs. <laughs> well, I guess we could use a, an explosion or two and some deaths. <laughs> but, that's fine. I can live without that for now. So, yeah. This is another great episode. Not the best, but... It's... The last episode was just sort of filler, and this one feels like we're actually getting some story and we're moving forward, so props to them for that. But what didn't I like? My only big complaint is there weren't really any major laugh-out-loud jokes in this episode. The last episode, like I said, felt much like filler so they were able to throw in a lot more jokes. This one is story-based, so it's it's got some serious moments in it, and I really do appreciate that, but I would have liked a couple more big jokes. But really, that and that's my only complaint. While this isn't the best episode, it's not the worst, and they do continue to improve on things. And I can't wait to see where this show's headed. I love these guest stars they're getting. They're getting some big name people. Uh, I'd love to see the ending of this episode. I'd love to see them do that more. And one final thing, and I mentioned this, I don't know if it was in the last one or the one before, they finally do it. What they don't understand is I'm a strong woman. We finally got a Miss Piggy karate chop. And to me, that makes this episode worth checking out. Thank you for watching. So Becky and I came to the mutual decision that it's best to keep our personal lives personal. Not funny, Zoot. Ah.